I just called back, uh, it's now 12.54 a.m. and I called, uh, the RCMP came down here, two cars, and they, they gave me a Protection of Property Act, which is a illegal document. It's not an act, not even a law. And uh, they, uh, he put my three wheelchairs, as you see in the in the video, on the street. I put them on throughout on the street in my trailer. And I have to sit here in my car wondering what's going to happen next because I can't leave my stuff sitting on the side on the street. Because if I come back here, it'll all be gone. I'll never see it again. So I have to call 911 to ask them when they're going to send a supervisor down here. And I'm trying to put my phone on speakerphone. Hi, I, uh, I'm at 28 Potter Mill Road in Waverly, and um, Do you I asked a landline phone number. Pardon? Do you have a landline phone number? No, I'm on a cell phone. And um, I asked them uh, to sell, send. A, there was two police officers here. I have a dispute with this guy that's a, a crook that's been ripping me off for a lot of money. And anyway, it's a long story. My three wheelchairs are sitting on the street. And my trailer that's not licensed yet is sitting on the street. And I can't leave these things sitting on the street because they're a hazard to traffic. And I asked for the policeman to send the supervisor down here because these police officers did not serve me very well. Instead, they've made a, a big nightmare out of all this. So, sir, you're calling from 28 Powder Mill Road, Waverly, Halifax County. Yes. And your phone number is 902-719-0008. Eight, yes. Okay. And you don't have an emergency at this time? Yeah, and uh, well, you tell me, what am I supposed to do with my three wheelchairs sitting on the street? Okay. What I need to know is, I'm going to help you with this, but what I need to know is you're calling on 911, which is for immediate threats to life. I have no way, no, I have no way to call you guys any other way. You're the RCMP. I don't have a local number. I don't have anything. Yes, I'm in my car. I'm going to take you off of 911, okay? okay? I'll transfer you over to my other phone line. Okay, thank you. I can't trans I can't tie up 911 for that, you. Okay, okay? thank you. Hi, is this is this one it's the same person. Okay, hi. And just so you know, I'm recording my call because I have to record it. Okay, and your name is? Daniel Towsey. Okay. <coughs> so what exactly are you asking for at this time? Well, I need help to get my wheelchairs off the street and in my trailer that's not licensed yet. It's only a small a utility trailer. But uh, the problem is that this is a long, ongoing nightmare for like the last nine months. And this guy that's been working on my wheelchairs has been stealing everything from me. He's, he's left all three of my wheelchairs so I can't use them. And anyway, it's, it's, a, it's just I've been a really, really long nightmare. And in wintertime, I can't go out anywhere because I can't walk well. So I know that very soon I'm going to be all my winter long. And this guy's had nine months to get my wheelchairs working. And he's all he's been doing is stealing my money and... He's broken my wheelchairs and everything else. So I started building a trailer trying to get my wheelchairs out of here, and I never got the trailer finished. So right now my wheelchair is sitting on the street, and my trailer. In the trailer. Yeah. And the trailer is drivable, but it, it doesn't have... I have temporary lights that I can put on it. Can I just put you on hold for one quick moment, please, sir? Yes. Stay on the line, okay? Thank you.
Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, just looking into it, the supervisor did attend tonight. They were on scene there, and they're not going back. And uh, you know what? I that he gave me a uh, protection of property act, which I told him is not a law; it's only an act anyway. And all you can do is give me a five hundred dollar fine if I go back on the property. So I went back on the property. I said, I want the fine so I can go to court. And he said, oh, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to arrest you. And I said, so what are you going to arrest me for? And then he just drove away. And uh, you, you know what? <laughs> I don't care how you look at this. The police are involved. I told them this man has been stealing from me and he's been stealing from a lot of people. He's been committing a lot of crimes. And he's left me in this mess where I have three wheelchairs that he... Uh, he, he took a $20,000 wheelchair that he was supposed to take to Toronto to bring it back to the manufacturer to have it rebuilt, and he, and he dismantled it, and he, he wrecked it. So I bought another wheelchair off of him, and uh, he started doing uh, things on it to make it fit me, and that he didn't do that right. I bought new parts, and he, and he stole the parts off the wheelchair. He left my wheelchair so I couldn't use the second wheelchair. And I had a third wheelchair that was ordered that cost about $60,000, and um, he has been holding on to that chair in his warehouse for months and months and months and not, not doing the work that he's been paid for, We're claiming he's waiting for parts that I paid probably $15,000 for. Anyway, this man's cost me over $100,000 in losses and he's left me without a wheelchair all summer and, I, and he knows I can't walk very far. I can walk short distance from my car and I told him, I said, I need my wheelchair. I can't even go out and do my grocery shopping. So I've been eating uh, you know, fast foods for the last six, six months this guy's created a nightmare in my life. And then the police, uh, instead of uh, investigating what's going on, they don't care. I said, you know what? If somebody took your $60,000 car and put it in their garage and started dismantling it and selling parts to people, you'd, have, you'd be charging that person immediately. So why is it that, why is it that a $60,000 wheelchair doesn't get treated the same way? It's a vehicle like any other vehicle. We have no laws to, to protect disabled people. No laws at all. Sir, what I can tell you, the RCP supervisor did attend. I'm sitting here parked in my car with these things sitting on the street, and I have to stay here, and I'm going to stay in my car until you help me. I can't leave my stuff on the street. And, sir, I can tell you, you can't call 911. All right. Well, when the, people, when the people in this neighborhood wake up and I start talking to them, you guys are going to look really bad because I know a lot of people in this neighborhood. I'm going to talk to everybody and tell them what's been going on here and how the police handled this. And the people know this business. They know me. And you know what? It's going to look really bad for you guys because I've been documenting the events with this guy for the last nine months with my camera and my photos. And I run a lot of websites. And the whole world's going to know what's going on. So and you guys are going to look really bad. You, you were told that there's a man here that's operating a business that's taken advantage of all the disabled people, and he's done this to a lot of people. He sells used goods as new. Uh, everything you can mention, he's, he's, he's uh, doing illegal. He drives vehicles that aren't licensed, that aren't even licensed to him. He, the list of crimes this guy commits doesn't end. His warehouse should be shut down by the government because it's nothing but a huge hazard to everyone. Everything this man does is, he has no respect for society or for people or for anyone. And you think, I'm going to look bad? Let me tell you, if I sit in my car all night long and the neighbors find out what's been happening to me, and I asked you guys to help me with this their terrible situation, every other disabled person that I've talked to hasn't got the means to... I have a 911 call, you'll have to hold me. Yeah. Good thing I lot of got a lot of batteries on my camera. Oh, I'm gonna have fun sleeping in my car tonight.
That's all right. Okay, so basically anything that's related to business that way is a civil matter? Well, it's not a civil matter right now because my wheelchairs are on the street. It's still a civil matter. That's okay. Right? That's okay. You're a servant, so you serve the people. You don't just uh, deal with uh, with just uh, outright criminals, okay? Your, your, your job is to serve the people. And, and <laughs> please, you don't know what a police officer's job is? It's a peace officer. Yes, I understand right. what a police officer's job and, is. And you're supposed to serve the, uh, the, the public for the good of society, and you're not doing that right now. Well, they've attended. You're not doing anything to help me. Remember, I'm going to publish everything I'm telling you. It's There's all being... There's nothing re I can do at this time. Yeah, I know. That's okay. But okay. You, yeah, that's and fine. I, I just need to let you know, with the 911, calling for non-emergency matters... Do you have any other number that I can call it at? Can be, it can be abused. And it's it's abused not being abused. You can get a fine. Yeah. Do you have another number that I can call? There is a non-emergency number. Okay, let me get my pen out. Since the police officers didn't bother talking to me... And it's going to be the exact same spot you're going to get in touch with. That's okay, I know that, but this, uh, it's the same thing, same people at the same place. But you see, uh, I live in Halifax and they have their own number. You guys have a number that's not an emergency. I don't know what it is. It's the same number, sir. Oh, I don't have it with me. Okay, you're, you, so you're answering under the HRM uh, phone number? We answer for all of the Halifax County. All right. Well, anyway, um, this is going to be really good because... Uh, there's a lot of wealthy people in this neighborhood. Boy, they're not going to like what's happening. But you know what? They're probably going to be really happy to know that somebody's standing up to this criminal that, you know, doesn't care about any laws whatsoever. He doesn't sure, care about... Sides, I know, you're not choosing... Look, I told the police officer to charge me. Right? I stepped back on the property. I said, I want that fine so I can take him to court. And he wouldn't do it. He said, oh, I'm going to arrest you instead. And I said, what are you going to arrest me for? And then they left. So, what's, what's Protection of Property Act? I already went to court and defeated that in court. It's unconstitutional. It's not a law. It's an act. Law acts don't have any standing in a real court. They only they, they only have standing because people are abiding by them. But they're not laws. You can't... You, you see, the, the thing is, police officers cannot issue penalties on people. A judge has to do that. Police officers don't have any authority to impose penalties without due process of law, which is courts. <coughs> anyway, hey, this is great because now you're in danger in my life because you're not you're not sending help. Sir, that's not fair to say that. Well, of course it's fair. It's not fair that I'm sitting in my car when it's below zero outside, and I don't have a whole lot of gas, but that's okay. I'll Sorry. have to. Vehicle, oh, and if I leave here with my wheelchairs and the trailer here, they could just disappear forever. The cops will just say, oh, they're obstructing the street and they'll take them away. Come on. You think all police officers are honest? Give me a break, please. I'm, I'm 60 years old. I, I know better to think that the police are even honest at all. They just pretend to be. They don't really care about anybody. Justice. Right, sir. Yeah. Have a good night. Right. Good night. It's now 11.01, or 1.09.